We are at a critical point in our nation's history. And I feel Christians are being manipulated and lied to in order to win their vote. It saddens my spirit to see so many Christians that bought into the lie. The fact is that the next president will probably choose up to five Supreme Court justices. And everyone agrees that this is a turning point for our nation. So here are some of the reasons why no Christian can vote for Hillary Clinton. Number one, Hillary Clinton's association with racist Ku Klux Klan members. So we hear constantly about David Duke from the white supremacists endorsing Donald Trump. Even though Donald Trump has disavowed David Duke several times, the media seems obsessed with repeating it. I didn't even know he endorsed me. David Duke endorsed me? Okay. All right. I disavow, okay? I totally disavow the Ku Klux Klan. I totally disavow David Duke. I've been doing it now for two weeks. This is, you're probably about the 18th person that's asked me the question. It was very clear. One thing you may not know is Hillary Clinton's mentor and personal friend was Senator Robert C. Byrd. Today, our country has lost a true American original, my friend and mentor, Robert C. Byrd. Senator Byrd was a man of surpassing eloquence and nobility. He left an indelible imprint on the Senate, on West Virginia, and on our nation. This is a former Ku Klux Klan member who became Exalted Cyclops. Exalted Cyclops was his rank as the leader of his chapter. Now, you may not remember hearing about this. That is because the media never covers it. Now that I think about it, it puts a lot of things into perspective. They are not just gangs of kids anymore. They are often the kinds of kids that are called super predators. No conscience, no empathy. We can talk about why they ended up that way, but first we have to bring them to heal. And the president but isn't it interesting, the, the double standard that is set for these two candidates? Number two, Hillary Clinton threatened, intimidated, and insulted many of the rape and sexual assault victims of her husband, Bill Clinton. And just in case you're unaware, Bill Clinton has been accused of sexual assault and rape on various occasions. Your history with women is all about destroying them. Whether it's all the women who accused your husband of serial marital infidelities, sexual harassment, or yes, rape. The war room created to assault the right wing, the crazy women desperate for attention, who wanted publicity, like Jennifer Flowers, who you said you'd like to crucify. You called her trailer trash. And Monica Lewinsky, you called her a narcissistic looney tune until we found your husband's semen on her dress. And Juanita Broderick, who says you threatened her. And I don't know what you said about Paula Jones, but you and your husband had to pay her $850,000 for your husband's sexual misdeeds. And you call them all bimbos. She's gaming you, folks. Pretty contradicting for the person who claims to be the champion of women. Number three, Hillary Clinton takes money from countries that fund terrorism. These are countries that persecute Christians, Jews, women, and gays. He is taken through the Clinton Foundation and donations to the Clinton Library. I want to go through this slowly. Stay with me. Mm -hmm. If you start with Saudi Arabia, okay, $25 million up to that amount to the Clinton Foundation, $10 million to the Clinton Library. Women can't drive. They need permission to work or travel. Marital rape not recognized. If you're gay or lesbian, punishable by death. No churches, no temples in Saudi Arabia. She takes their money. Go to Kuwait. Up to $10 million donated to the Clinton Foundation. Uh, courts deny women the right to become public prosecutors and judges. No laws against domestic violence or rape. And if you're gay and you're involved in a homosexual act, well, that's illegal and you can get seven years in prison and a fine. If you go to the UAE, they donated up to $5 million to the Clinton Foundation. Men have the legal right to beat their wives with physical violence. Marital rape is not recognized. Same-sex marriage is illegal. All sex activity outside of marriage is illegal, and women are often punished severely for adultery. Then we go to Brunei. Money donated to the Clinton Foundation up to $5 million. Marital rape is not a crime as the wife is not under the age of 13. And if you're gay, those acts are illegal, punishable by up to 10 years in prison, in some cases death. Cutter, 
$5 million up to that amount to the Clinton Foundation, marital rape not a, a crime. The law states that it's a woman's responsibility to obey her husband. And if you're gay and you commit gay acts, punishable by death. Oman, up to $5 million to the Clinton Foundation. A woman's consent is not required to legalize a marriage. Marital rape is not a crime. If you're gay, it's punishable by up to six months to three years in prison. Algeria gave, what, up to $500,000 to the Clinton Foundation. Marital rape, not a crime. Married women under uh, 18, they can't travel abroad without the permission of their husband. Homosexual activity is illegal, punishable by two months to two years in prison and a fine. And the Washington Post reports that many Middle Eastern countries donated over a million dollars to the Clinton Foundation, as you can see up there on the screen. Now, I say all of this, she says she's the champion of women's rights and gay rights. And up until this week, she's never criticized the practices of this, these countries and took their money. How corrupt, you know, is, is that hypocrisy in your view? This by far is probably the most disgusting thing that Hillary Clinton does. And the fact that cozy, comfortable Christians in this country can support a woman that is taking money from countries like Saudi Arabia that have been directly linked to funding 9-11 is shameful. The fact that these countries stone, hang, and decapitate Christians, Jews, women, and gays every single day should make us sick to our stomachs. You will answer to God one day for who you support. You will answer to God one day for standing for unrighteousness. Number four, Hillary Clinton supports abortion up to moments before the child's birth. Although many may dispute this, there is a lot of evidence to this claim. Hillary Clinton has stated that an unborn child has no constitutional rights. The unborn uh, person uh, doesn't have constitutional rights. Now, My question is, at what point does someone have mm -hmm. constitutional rights? And are you saying that a child, on its due date, just hours before delivery, still has no constitutional rights? Under our law, that is the case, uh, Paula. From that comment, one could gather that she advocates for abortion even moments before the child is born. Hillary Clinton became the first candidate to be endorsed by Planned Parenthood during the primaries, which essentially is a nationwide abortion clinic. There's been over 58 million abortions in the United States since Roe v. Wade in 1973. That's almost the current population of Italy. We have essentially aborted the equivalent of a small nation, and Hillary Clinton wants to expand on that. She has also vowed to repeal the Hyde Amendment. The Hyde Amendment is in place to forbid the federal government from using federal funds for abortions, like Medicaid. And not as long as we have laws on the book, like the Hyde Amendment, making it harder for low-income women to exercise their full rights. Essentially, Hillary Clinton wants to use Medicaid to fund abortions. Hillary Clinton has also stated that she would only appoint Supreme Court justices that would uphold Roe v. Wade, the landmark Supreme Court case that allowed for abortions in the first place. No doubt that the only people that I would ever appoint to the Supreme Court are people who believe that Roe v. Wade is settled law and Citizens United needs to be overturned. How can we, as Christians, stand for something this evil and corrupt? When you preach that Jesus came to give life, know that you are supporting someone who wants to take life. Number five, Hillary Clinton is a pathological liar. No, I am not stretching the truth. This woman lies from the greatest scandals down to the smallest tidbits, whether it's stating that she landed under sniper fire in Bosnia when it never occurred. I remember landing under sniper fire. In the speech last week, Senator Clinton was referring to her visit to Tuzla, Bosnia in 1996 as First Lady. There was supposed to be some kind of a greeting ceremony at the airport, but instead we just ran with our heads down to get into the vehicles. Problem is, that's not what happened. Compare that to Senator Clinton's account. I remember landing under sniper fire. There was no greeting ceremony, and we basically were told to run to our cars. Now that is what happened. Thank you. There was no sniper fire either when Senator Clinton visited two army outposts where she posed for photos. Hundreds of thousands have viewed the video online in just the past few days, a reminder that in politics, memory should always match the videotape. 
Cheryl. or stating that she never supported NAFTA when in fact she did. Hillary Clinton helped get NAFTA approved. She held at least five meetings to strategize about how to win congressional approval. She helped the White House block opposition from labor and environmental groups. And she was the featured speaker at a crucial meeting. Participants in that event said, quote, her remarks were totally pro-NAFTA. There was no equivocation for her support for NAFTA at the time. This is important. something that you wrote about as a real success for your husband. You said it was good on balance for New York and America in 2004. And now you're in Ohio, and your words are much different, Senator. The record is very clear. Well, I, I, you don't have all the record, because you can go back and look at what I've said consistently. Oh, I think that um, everybody is in favor of free and fair trade, and I think that... Uh, uh, NAFTA is proving its worth. To lying about not emailing classified emails on her private server when in fact she did. I did not email any um, classified material to anyone on my email. There is no classified material. From the group of 30,000 emails returned to the State Department in 2014, 110 emails in 52 email chains have been determined by the owning agency to contain classified information at the time they were sent or received. And on top of that, stating she turned over all of her emails to the State Department, when in fact there were thousands of emails that were never handed over. I have uh, absolute confidence that everything that could be in any way uh, connected to work is now in the possession of the uh, State Department. The FBI also discovered several thousand work-related emails that were not among the group of 30,000 emails returned by Secretary Clinton to state in 2014. Or just from small things like claiming that her daughter Chelsea Clinton was jogging around the World Trade Center as the planes hit on September 11th. This woman has a history of being a pathological liar. So it surprises me when Christians, or anyone for that matter, will believe anything she says when she makes a promise. It may sound good, but here's the real question. Why should we believe you, Hillary? This list could carry on for hours. But this is only a brief summary of some of the reasons why I, as a Christian, cannot vote for Hillary Clinton. I'm compelled to tell all the Christians that support her that they are merely voting for her for what they will get. Or should I say, what they think they will get and it surprises me that much of the evangelical community support her. We seem to only vote for our desires, but not based on the principles of the Word of God. Christians today seem to be prostituting themselves. We are selling our integrity and our morals for what they can give us. Our vote should be based on the principles of the Bible and what God's standards are. But I know this, we will give an account for our actions one day, for who we supported. We cannot call what is evil good, as Christians sit there and watch the nation go down in flames, and the church turns a blind eye to the truth, what example do we set for our children? Why do we sell ourselves for false promises? Is there anyone who stands for righteousness still? Do morals and integrity have a price? Will we be remembered as a generation of cowards? A nation with no foundation or convictions? A nation without God? Or as a church that fought till the very end? You will decide, November 8th.